in this tutorial for Give Set the Little Stream, I'm doing things a little differently. Um, because it's, it's a fairly simple song to play of just the bar chords, I'm just going to walk you through and kind of narrate what I'm doing with the pedals uh, so that you can understand what's going on. Uh, it's really not that complicated of a song to play. It's just, um, it's almost like a, like a dance, kind of, you know, getting it all coordinated and everything. So, um, so I'm going to stop and I'm going to stop and, and t talk you through some things and maybe pause in different areas and just I'll walk you through exactly what I'm doing. So let's get started. Okay, so what I'm what I was doing just there is I was setting the tempo. So I did I did a um, two measures of uh, just uh, just strumming to kind of get the tempo myself, and then right here when I clicked on uh, that left switch, and actually it's called a right switch on the loop pedal up there. The red pedal is an RC30. Um, uh, by boss. It's a loop pedal that has two channels or two loops that I can do. Um, the the silver pedal to the right of it, um, all that does is that just switches between the two channels. Okay, um, and the pedal to the on the red on the red looper, uh, the the right pedal, and I'm saying this backwards as we're looking at the video, so you can kind of better understand. But that that right pedal on the looper uh, is what uh, starts recording a loop okay and as I start recording a loop then I'll hit that same one again to stop uh, or, or to loop that recording so that that tells it I'm done recording go back to the beginning and start looping that over and over okay um, so I was just setting the tempo with that strumming and then you saw right when I hit uh, that that right pedal that started the loop. Um, let's go back a little bit and um, let's just go back to the beginning and so now that you know that. So right there I just started the loop and that's where I looped it. And I switched channels and I started the loop for the vocal now. Okay, so on this song I have two loops. I did one for percu for percussion and one for vocal. So I started with percussion and then I switched to vocal. Now, the important thing about when you're using a loop pedal, especially the RC30, is that um, it will loop the exact same amount of time on both channels. So once you get them going, um, then you know, then you can start and stop it wherever uh, because it'll, you'll insert yourself into that loop. Um, the most important thing is setting that very first loop, which is why I did the two measures of just um, of just kind of chucking on the on the uh, the strings to get my tempo down. Because right when you hit that um, that open loop button, you're in it, and there's no going back. I mean, it does have a way that you can start it over, but with the first loop, it's you got to get that first one right. Okay, so I just switched. Now I'm on the vocal channel, so I'm laying down the vocal uh, loops. Away, give away, give so that was one time through. Now I'm away, doing another one on top of that. Away, give away, give Close that. So what I did is I just stopped that loop, or closed the loop so it's not recording anymore, and then switched back to the percussion and, uh, and started recording on that loop. Okay, did you see that? Let me... Let me take you back a little bit more again. Okay. Away, so here away, I, give away, I loop it and then switch channels away, and then start recording on the away, on the percussion loop. Away, away, so that was one time through. Now I do claps. You know, another one to collapse, kind of layer it some more. And then I'm done with that. So now I close that. And now I'm in it. So now I've got both loops going, but I'm not recording anything. Now what I'm what I'm about to do here is it looks a little tricky, but it's it's not. It's just kind of knowing um, when to do it and why you're doing it. So what I have to do is that if if you ever stop one, if you ever stop, you can stop one loop while the other one is going, and then whenever you start the loop that you started, it'll come right back in wherever it was. Um, it, it stays in perfect sync. But if you accidentally stop both of them at the same time or at different times, when you start them back up, it'll start back at the very beginning. It won't start up in the middle wherever you want. Does that make sense? So what I have to do here is I have to stop the percussion loop 
because I stop it for just half a measure, but then I have to start it again before stopping the vocal loop. Because if I did it, if I stopped the vocal loop before starting the percussion loop back up, then um, then it, it would just restart at the very beginning. So that's kind of the dance I do here. So the first one I'm gonna hit is gonna stop the percussion loop, all right? And then I'm going to start the percussion loop, switch pedals, or switch loops, and then uh, stop the vocal loop, okay? See that? So now the, the vocal is stopped and I'm just doing uh, the percussion. Okay, so what I did there is I just started the, the vocals just to come in right there and then I, and then I stopped the vocals because I just wanted it for that one little part. I'm going to start it. And I'm going to leave it because I want the vocals going while I'm doing the chorus. So I've got both loops going plus what I'm playing. Now it's going to be the same thing I did before where I'm going to stop the percussion. Okay, what I had to do first was I had to switch it back to the percussion loop first so I could stop could, so I could stop it. So that's why you saw a little uh, on the on the silver switch um, why I hit that. Start and stop the vocal. And start the vocal. And leave it alone. And now at the end of this chorus, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the vocal going, but stop the percussion. So first, I gotta switch to the percussion and stop the percussion right there. Start the percussion back up here. I think it's really cool when you start a percussion um, to come back in. Start it before the downbeat, so you kind of get that last clap going in. Um, it just makes it more refreshing. And I think the goal in looping, um, and I'm not a very good looper. I don't do it a lot. There are guys I know that are way better. Um, but it, it's kind of to make it not sound like it's looping. You want to create a song um, that uh, that almost doesn't even feel like a loop, but instead you're bringing things in and out to to accommodate the song rather than the song accommodating the loop. Like we did at the end of the other chorus, we're gonna stop the percussion, but keep the uh, but keep the vocal going. Now the difference with this one and the other one is that the other one I let the guitar continue ringing, and this one I did a hard stop. Um, okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm gonna switch I'm gonna switch over to the vocal, and I'm gonna open that loop back up so I can start recording more on it. Um, you'll notice in the tab that it says, you know, open loop, close loop. It's basically when it's open, that means I've opened the loop back up for recording and I can add things to it. And then when I close it, it continues looping, but whatever I'm playing doesn't get recorded into it. Okay, so I'm about to open it back up right here. Away, give okay, switch channels away, and now it's open. Just loop. Okay, and the thing that I'm doing here as well is that when you are looping, you don't have to loop from the beginning of the measure to the end of the measure. You can go in the middle even right when it's looping back to the beginning. Does that make sense? So so that that's kind of what mixes it up more. So maybe um, 
you know, uh, you're maybe you're doing a four bar, uh, a, a four measure loop, and you've got um, you know a pattern in there that uh, that is four measures long, but then maybe uh, you have another pattern that you want to do that's also four measures long, but you start that on the third measure, so that um, so that's in between, so you can't really feel exactly where the loop starts and stops. It feels more continuous that way, and that's what I'm doing right here. Okay, now I switch back to the percussion, and whenever you switch channels on the RC30, it actually it closes the loop from the previous one. So you, even though I didn't stop or close that loop, just switching channels is what closed it. I'm gonna open, or I'm gonna start the, the percussion right there. So I'm not recording on the percussion, I just started playing. It. And what I also did there is that. Um, the, the, the thing that's different between the outro here that we're doing now and the intro part is that, um, it was a, it was a, it was a four bar, uh, loop before, or maybe it was two measures, but anyways, the, the loop that's actually going is, um, is, is, is half that of what I'm playing on the chord. So, you know, for every, let's say the loop was two measures, and I should know this because I did, I wrote out the tab, but I don't have it in front of me. Um, uh, you know, the loop was only two measures, but, uh, or, or four measures, let's do this. Take a step back, here we go. All right, so, uh, so the loop, um, So the difference between this outro section and the rest of the song is that the rest of the song was built on uh, a four measure loop. Um, so, uh, w which I'm still doing here, but by playing the chords, now I have you know four measures of one chord, but then I want another four measures of another chord and, and then go back and forth and back and forth. So that almost creates a, a faux loop, if you will, uh, that's eight measures long on top of it, but that but I'm playing that loop rather than actually looping it through. Does that make sense? Um, so that's kind of what adds that whole new dimension to the outro of the song. Just going back and forth between that E and that A. Okay, now I'm going to stop the there vocal. Something all can give. There is something all can give. To kind of give a more complete ending to the song. All right, hopefully that helped. Um, if it still didn't, if it was even more confusing than it was before, I don't blame you. Um, but you can just uh, email or comment or uh, you know send carrier pigeon whatever to to ask me some questions and and. Uh, uh, there's also plenty of tutorials on YouTube of how to use an RC30 looper um, that they do a much better job than I could as far as taking you through it and showing you how it works. So, I, so if you have one of those, look that up. Um, you also, there, there's, there's looping uh, software or apps for the iPad, uh, probably for Android as well. And I know Jimmy Fallon just and, and Will Smith just did one the other night on, on, uh, on Late Night. But, um, uh, but you can download th those apps and those will kind of give you things to play around with as, as well. So have fun with it and good luck.